Monday, Monday. Oh my Jesus. Lord Jesus. Jesus. Where are you where are you not going? That's what I was gonna say. Where you think you're going, but where are you not going? <laughs> wow. Okay, so good <laughs> morning. <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> so uh I hope everyone had a great weekend. Um yeah. So uh Yesterday, I posted on my Facebook um, asking, you know, what would be a good topic, you know, to uh, make a video about. And <laughs> one of my Facebook friends, uh, <laughs> I was like, really? <laughs> Can you uh, find a more difficult <laughs> subject to talk about? His question was, um, where, wh no, why... Why did God make souls? Or like, no, what is the purpose of the soul? Or what was the purpose of God creating the soul? Or something like that. And I'm like, okay, really? <laughs> First of all, I don't know all of the reasons, but you can extrapolate some of the reasons why God would, would do such a thing. And that is the evidence of our, or I should say the evidence is our experience. Not the experience that we're having, but the experiences the experiences that were intended by the first creation of or I should say the, the creation of the first man and woman on this on this planet. Because there's other worlds. There are other worlds with other people on it, uh, similar to ours. <clears throat> so we're not the only ones. Uh, I believe AJ said there's I th I think he mentioned like eight eight or something, I think it said eight or so or something like that, um, <clears throat> of other worlds, and so, um, it's not just us, there are other ones out there, but it's the experience, but I wasn't sure what his question was really regarding, I don't know if it was the actual soul, which is a physical thing, we see it as a non-physical thing, but it is a physical thing, um, <clears throat> it's kind of like, uh, our... And this is not even the subject I'm even talking about, but just, you know, um, our soul is a physical thing, just like our spirit body is a physical thing. But to us now, it's a non-physical thing. To us, as we, as we exist today, or I should say not exist, because we exist in, we exist as the soul, as the spirit body, and as the physical body. But... Our awareness right now is focused on our physical or what we know as physical because this is how we're experiencing this physical world uh, but when we pass our spirit body will become very physical uh, in terms of our perception of, of our, our uh, spirit body but the soul is also physical as well and when the soul union happens at that moment, in the 22nd dimension, when that soul union happens, we will then become physical again. But we're just all physical. That's the thing. Is like Everything is physical, but it's just a different vibration. And so a different vibration is going to return a different experience. Uh, so, yeah, there. Okay. That, but anyway, I wasn't sure if he was talking about the consciousness that the soul has or the actual soul, the actual physicality of the soul. So I, I'm not going to answer the question because I don't know what... I don't, I'm not sure what his question was specifically. Um, however, another person had uh, said, talk about the controversy um, regarding hell. And I'm like, oh, well, that's an easy one. I mean, that was real, real easy. Um, so I guess I'll just talk about that. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is funny. Um, and as hot as I don't know what in here. Hold on a second. I think I had the heater on last night. It's hot in here. Oh my goodness, my goodness. <clears throat> All right. Oh gosh, I feel so good this morning. I'm actually wearing clothes that I can fit. I, I remember. You, blah, 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 blah. Remember, I told you guys I had to buy clothes because I lost weight. Why? Well, finally, they finally came in this weekend, um, and they feel great. Like it's not all loose and baggy. It's kind of like not form fitting, like like tights, but, but they're pants that fit. <laughs> anyway, okay, so hell, dun, 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 oh my gosh, hell, gosh, hell, uh, I guess most people believe hell is being this hot, fiery place, um, where you're going to burn in hell, you know, you know, 
now. Be- ah, so this is funny because this actually came to mind, uh, I think last week. Um, I think last week. And uh, it was like how people would say, I hope you burn in hell. And it's like, that's not happening. There is no fire there. But there is pain and suffering. Absolutely, there's pain and suffering. Um, but there's various degrees of pain and suffering. Uh, so down in the depths of hells, um, or I should, I should say down in the depths of the hells, uh, because it's plural. It's not just one place. It's, it's uh, the whole first dimension, or I should say the lower half of the, the first dimension, that's considered the hells. That's where people go when they have a very degraded soul. A dark soul, that's where they go. But it's not just one place. Um, And let's say someone has murdered someone and someone has raped someone. Two different people. um, They will go to different locations depending on the the level of love, or I should say the lack of love in in their soul. So however much darkness they and pain they have within their soul is going to dictate where they go within these levels in the lower dimensions. So let's just say that the first dimension it has 100 levels, and the bottom, the bottom um, uh, half, the 50 levels, uh, one through 50, those are going to be the different levels that are within the hells. And depending on, like I said, depending on where your soul, what, depending on what, um, where you are in your soul condition, um, that will dictate the level that you go. So these two people that I mentioned earlier, in terms of the rapist and the murderer. They will go to different locations. They won't even see one another at all. If, because one of them has committed something that it has, they have to have a really dark soul in order to do that. And the other one, they have to have a pretty dark soul, but not as bad to take a life. So the person who committed the murder will most likely be in the lower level, a lower level than the other person who raped another. Um, and so there are just multiple levels. It's just, I mean, to me, it's like no big deal because I, I've been talking about this for so long. It's like you just kind of know it after a while and it's no big deal. But I guess for, for those of you who are not really aware or knowledgeable or whatever, you know, you have a belief, a religious belief about what hell is, um, this may help you understand because when you pass, and like I said before, you know, most, almost all of us are going to pass in the first dimension and at some point. At some place within the first dimension, we're going to end up there. But the top half of the the uh, first dimension, um, I think the, the top part of the first dimension is called Summerland. And Summerland is equivalent to what Earth is um, at its best um, state. So, you know, there's no... Um, oh, I'm going to make this one right here, buddy. <laughs> um, the You know how the vegeta- vegetation is kind of brown... Like, everything is beautiful. There's nothing dying. Um, there, there's none of that murder-type stuff. This is where the children go, actually, um, when they pass. Like, just say um, a, a mother has miscarried or a child has died for, you know, whatever reason. Um, <clears throat> what would happen is they would end up in the top level of the first dimension. That's where they would go, and it's 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 fun. That's why they call it Summerland because it's always daylight. Um, there isn't any darkness. Uh, there isn't any. I don't want to say there isn't any evil, but there there really isn't much um, violence. Or there, there really isn't that stuff there. That's where they you can feel safe. Uh, so you know, it just really depends um, on on your soul condition. This is why I always talk about the soul condition because it's going to dictate where you go. It's going to dictate where you live. It's not like here. Um, well, it actually, it is just like here. Um, and I had kind of alluded to this before, that the life in the spirit world is very similar in terms of its operation. Um, it's similar to here. Meaning, we use money to gain access to better living conditions. But in the spirit world, you have to have love to gain access to better living conditions. So, things that you want to enjoy, you have to have love in order to enjoy that. So, and this is why I said, you know, this is why we come here first to learn how how the universe works. Like, you are literally learning how things work in the spirit world by living here. So, like, for instance, you, if you have a passion for playing the guitar, well, 
you would need money to go and uh, buy a guitar, right? So the thing is, you can have a guitar in the spirit world, but you don't have any money. But if you're in the hells, you don't have love. It's like you don't have the currency that's needed to um, obtain that which you desire. And so all the things that you desire are not available to you if you don't have love within your soul. So if you're in the hells, you're not, and you love music, and you, you play music here, or you, you, know, you dance here to music, there isn't going to be any music there. One, because there aren't going to be any, anyone there who's able to even manifest an instrument so that you can hear, hear music, and that, you know, they can play music, and you hear music, and dance to it, and sing to it. Like, there isn't, that stuff is not available to you at all. And if you have a lot of pain and suffering, it's going to be very difficult for you to focus on humming a song when all you can do is uh, focus on your pain because there is physical pain uh, in the spirit world. So the, the emotional pain that we feel here is felt in our physical, in our spirit body when we pass. So you're feeling a lot of pain, your, your flesh is falling off and all these different things depending on the, the degra degradation of your soul. So it's not just everyone who's, everyone's going to go to Everyone who goes to hell is going to experience the same. No, that doesn't happen. Um, it really depends on your individual soul condition. This is why I said you can't give a shit about what anybody else is feeling or whatever anybody else is thinking. All you need to care about is what you're thinking and what you're feeling because that's the only thing that's important because that's going to dictate your soul condition. So I was uh, chatting with someone on, well, not chatting with someone, but someone had made a statement about, you know, Bill Cosby and, um, and that that person said that she hates Bill Cosby, and she kind of used she she admitted she used strong language, but she still has issues with uh, men who are abusers because that person was abused when they were a child, and um, so but it's the it's the the hatred within the soul that is going to dictate her soul condition, and I, I was going to talk about this, but I I totally forgot, and I really didn't know how to. Um, where I got my sunglasses on? I think it's. Wanted to look fancy with my Versace's on. No sun out. Um, it was a little bit ago. Anyway, um, so <clears throat> when it comes to, you know, the hate. Oh, that's what it was. It was, uh, I was going to title it Stop, Stop Creating, ooh, Stop Creating Karma for Yourself. Um, because it's two things that happens with our, with our soul. We can... We have the emotional injuries that are automatic that are automatically transferred to us from our parents and from our parents who got who have received their emotional injuries from their ans their parents and ancestors. So it's been passed down from generation to generation to generation. So, for instance, um, someone who is a child and they were molested um, or sexually abused, then what happened is somewhere along the generation could be their parent or their grandparents, or great, 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 or great, great, or whatever. And so the emotional injuries are still passed down, so that would cause the law of attraction for that child. And so that emotional injury is there. And so there isn't anything the child did to create it, but they got it. And so we have the emotional injuries that are locked within us from our ancestors, parents and ancestors, and then we have the emotional injuries that we cause for ourselves, meaning we react due to the things that are within our soul. So, like for instance, I was trying to explain to uh, the lady that, you know, the hatred that you have within you is going to cause your law of attraction. It's going to create the law of attraction based on that hatred. So if you hate another you're going to continue getting experiences where you're going to continue hating people, but it's the feeling of the hate. I didn't go into detail like this, but it's the feeling of hate that is going to cause you to do things to someone else, which is going to generate that karma for yourself. So this is why it's not good to respond in such a way. Um, like I don't, I'm not angry with the people who sexually abuse me, so I'm not going to create karma for myself in that respect regarding that situation. Now, it may create karma in a different situation, but that's why you need to be aware of why you feel, what you're feeling, and all this other stuff. You just have to know what's going on with yourself so that you understand and have a full awareness as to why you're doing the things that you're doing. As, as of right now, I try not to hate people. Do I get angry? Yes, I do get angry. But 
I'm not projecting the anger towards another. Like, I'm angry at the fact that it happened. I don't wish any ill will towards anyone. I don't go that far. I just get angry at the fact that I'm experiencing what I'm experiencing. And that anger is a suppression of the pain that I'm not willing to feel. And so this is why it's important to, to not project the anger because this also darkens your soul. So even though you have the emotion, the pain within you, and this is why spirits are able to get to the sixth dimension and still have pain within their soul. So if you reach the sixth dimension, which is right before the seventh dimension, obviously, um, which is a transitional, uh, the seventh dimension is a transitional uh, place where you're receiving divine love. And once you enter the eighth dimension, you are then a divine, I'm sorry, you are then a, a celestial being, and that's what people know as angels. And so there are no emotional injuries. There's nothing in you whatsoever that's unloving. And you have received. So you are at the uh, level of where Adam and Eve were when they were first created the sixth dimension. You have now received God's divine love. Excuse me. And now you're able to live beyond the seventh dimension as a celestial being. And uh, so, yeah, so that's that. So the thing is, the reason why spirits are able to get to the sixth dimension is because they stop projecting their hate. They, they don't have hate in themselves anymore. But that doesn't mean that they don't have pain. They don't have emotional injuries from their, that they've taken on. And this is what, this is so amazing, you know, in, in terms of God's system and how he created it. Is even though, it's like, you don't have to be perfect in order to enjoy the things, uh, and to enjoy things that make us happy and, and joyful and, and all these different exciting things. That, like, that stuff is not held um, from us. It's actually, we're actually awarded the ability to, and opportunity to experience it, even though we have pain within our soul. But, you have to be loving. So you can still have the pain within your soul and reach the sixth dimension. You just can't have any uh, hatred. You can't have any anger. Those are the things you have to get rid of in order to progress. But in order to transition to the seventh, a lot of spirits who reach the sixth dimension have to go all the way back to the third, all the way back to the second dimension, depending on what they need to learn, depending on what they need to release because different emotions are associated with different lessons. And these things, it's like certain things are learned in the third dimension. Like there's things that I've learned that are from the third dimension, but there are things that I haven't learned that are in the second dimension, if that makes any sense. So there's a lot of back and forth in the spirit world because people are learning and figuring out and discovering what things are within their soul. So it's not one of these... Um, it's, it's a linear progression, but it's not in terms of the, the dimensions. Like, it's a linear progression in terms of forward and backwards, up and down, I should say, in terms of increasing your soul in love and decreasing your soul in love. So, it's, a, it's linear in that respect, but in terms of the dimensions, you're going to have to go up and down, up and down, up and down, if, if you don't learn the lessons that are meant to be learned within those uh, respectful dimensions. <clears throat> and uh, so yeah so it doesn't matter like you can you can actually let's say you're in the first dimension and you're in the 30th level of the hells uh, you can increase your love in your um, in your soul and then you can come to let's say you just come to earth for whatever reason uh, you just want to come and tinker around or whatever or see some of your, your relatives or see a, a, a grandson of yours or a great grandson that you want to be here and you get involved in some things and you're attempting to help but you're actually taking away someone else's free will and you're influencing someone to do something which is actually taking away someone's free will because you're, you're causing them to live your will, you can degrade your soul and drop back down to the 30th level or even the 20th level depending on what you do here. So it's not like, oh, once you reach the, the second dimension, you're, you, you, know, you don't have to go back down again. No, no, no. You can even be in the first dimension, do something to someone and still degrade your soul and go even lower. So it's, 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 it's a back and forth thing and this is why it's so important to just focus on love, to know that that is the only goal. 
no, there is no other goal whatsoever. That is your focus. Just, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do that. <clears throat> Got a big truck in back of me, and I'll, I'll swoop right on in here. All right, Bradley. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, the hells, uh, there's just various levels. It's not just this one uh, place of torment. Your torment <laughs> is different depending on your soul condition. Um, and it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be that way. That's the thing. Like, it doesn't have to be like that. If you take it upon yourself now, I mean, because if you've been listening to these videos, then you have some type of awareness in terms of where, you know, what's going on. You have some kind of foundation in terms of what's going on in the spirit world. You've been learning about your soul. Look, everything that I've learned, I've shared just about. Um, and... So if I'm able to understand this and get a grasp on it and change my life and not engage in things that I used to engage in, then you can do the same thing. The thing is, I'm using my, the opportunity that I have now. It's like, why wait? It, uh, we all know when we wait, we, you know, you snooze, you lose. That's just the way it, it works, you know? It's, you're not going to progress until you engage in efforts to progress. So if you want to wait 20 years to go to school, then you're not going to experience the benefits of having that degree until you finish. So you're just starting 20 years later, plus the time it's going to take you to learn what you need to learn. So, you know, that's why I say, you know, focus on it now. Even if you don't focus hard on it, if, it, if you don't make it, you know, your your soul um, effort, meaning not soul, but soul. <laughs> um, like, if you don't make that your, your, um, your primary focus, then that's fine but at least I don't want I don't want you but you know go ahead um I mean fine you know that's fine you know you do it on your own time we all have the free will to do that but just understand the later you you start the later you're going to have the benefit of that so you know that's why like even though it's hard for me to um access the emotions I'm slowly but surely I'm starting to to feel them, but it's slight without forcing it because that's that's one of the things is I do not want to force this because anything forced is not authentic. You can't just sit there and force yourself to uh, to cry and, and get emotional. No, it has to be a natural thing, you know. You because if you force it, you're using your intellect, and if you're suppressing it, you're using your intellect. This is why you have to just allow it to not have such resistance in terms of feeling your emotions so it's not about analyzing it it's not about you know i've got to make myself cry that's not going to work and i know someone who's been trying to do this um and or who has been engaging in in terms of forcing themselves to cry and it's not working um i know it's not working they may believe you know it's working and whatever spirits are attached to them may you know, give them a feeling of, of ooh, I'm, I'm making progress and I feel good because these spirits can give you these feel good feel these feel good feelings, um, and they not be authentic, so or genuine. So you know, it's just you just have to be mindful of this stuff. But just you know, let it just let it happen. Let it happen. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna do this. What I want to do, I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't think it's gonna happen. Bradley, it's gonna happen right here. It's happening. It happened. <laughs> I mean, my cups may have fell on the floor, but that's okay. Um. So yeah, the hells. You know, it's um. It's interesting. I mean, at some point, if you really think about it, if we're in the first dimension and we have a lot of people, if you're angry, if you snap at people, you have bad attitudes, you get annoyed. Um, you want to clap back at someone, then you're going to end up in the hells. I mean, that's that's just all there is to it. You're going to end up in the hells. If you want, if you if someone um, does something to you and you're like, you know, well, screw you, you stupid blah blah blah, and f you, you know, go to hell, you stupid blah blah blah. <laughs> like if you if this is you, then yes, you're going to end up in the hells because you have a lot of anger. And that's due to all the pain that you're not willing to look at and deal with. So, if this is you, you're going to end up in the hells. So, it's not, I wouldn't be afraid. I don't think the hells are, you know, 
anything you should be afraid of because that which you are afraid of, you experience. So if you're, if you're afraid of people going to get you, then yes, you're going to be around people who are going to get you because that's going to be your law of attraction. That fear is going to be part of your law of attraction. So what you want to do is release that fear and not have such a fear of the hills, not have a fear of people getting you. This is what I mean, like fear and anger, these things you gotta, you just gotta, you gotta let that stuff go. And this is why it's important to just feel the pain. It's better to be in pain than to be in anger or fear. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. Um, because at least you're, at, you're, you're you're living in truth, meaning you acknowledge the pain that you have. You know that it's there. You're not trying to deny it. And so this is why you're not projecting anger at someone. And also you're not, um, you're not fearful of people trying to get you because you don't want to be harmed again. Just understand that you have been harmed. It can't happen again. And that's the only thing you need to do is release the emotions from that experience when you were harmed. So... <clears throat> This is another way to increase your soul condition because now you're not, like I said, you're not projecting this anger towards anyone. You don't have fear, which is going to attract someone or people towards you that will keep you in fear. And this is what I'm saying. You're, you have to be mindful of what's in your soul. You have to be mindful of your thoughts and how you feel um, because this will all, uh, this will all, um, sorry. I'm I'm, uh, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired, but this will also aid in um, your overall experience. It says currently caffeinating. I bought these little cups from Costco, and they have these little sayings on it, and it says currently caffeinating. So hopefully that kicks in a little bit. Um, ding, 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 like a pinball machine. Um, <clears throat> I think so, because I use that, that French roast Starbucks. That Starbucks coffee is no joke, baby. <laughs> and I have you shaking. Um, so yeah, the hells. I'm, I'm actually quite excited to, I, it's like, you don't have to be in the hells to experience the hells. You can be in a good condition, and if you want to go down to the hells and take a peek, you can do that. I would rather do that because <laughs> I'm curious about what the hells actually look like. Like, you know, you can hear descriptions from the people. Oh, that's what I wanted to say. Good thing I said that. So, you know, if you want to learn more, because here's the thing on earth, if you belong to religion, then it's all fire and brimstone, right? That's what hell is. It's a hot, fiery place. And that's where Satan lives. And he's the ruler. And the, first of all, there is no Satan. They're just not. But if you want to believe that there's a Satan, then fine. That's your law of attraction. Your um, fearful law of attraction that you're creating for yourself, as I just pointed out a, a moment ago. If you want to believe that, fine. But there is no Satan. Um, there are devils, um, or what people call devils and demons. The, the word is interchangeable. Um, because it's applying, it's being applied to the same type of people, which are spirits just like us who pass over. So there are devilish-like spirits. Um, if you will, um, there are, um, demons, uh, or spirits who are in a dark, and that's all the demon is, is a spirit that is in a very, very, very dark degraded state. Um, that's what a demon is. And so that is also what a devil is. There isn't this one being that, that governs the hells. No, you actually govern the hells. Your, our souls, they govern the hells. So the, here's the thing. If all the people, if all the billions of people in the hills were to improve their soul condition and get into the second dimension, the first one would disappear. It would disappear. And so like when Jesus, um, back in the first century, when, or I should say when AJ was Jesus, when Jesus walked the earth, I should say, yeah, that's better. Um, when Jesus walked the earth in the first century, um, there wasn't a seventh dimension until he came along because he what he did was he accepted and this is part of the whole uh, rebirth thing this is where it comes from um <clears throat> his soul was renewed it was like a new birth and um he it, because he was the first one to receive on this planet <laughs> let me be clear about that one on this planet not other worlds out there 
but on this particular earth, um, he received God's love for the first time. He was the first one to receive God's love from this planet. And that transformed his soul. And so now his soul was a divine soul. Not divine like God, but he had he held divine love within it. Um, and so he created the second, I mean the seventh dimension and the eighth dimension. And I think when he passed, he was in the, I want to say the, is it the tenth, eighth or tenth? I can't remember. Um, I can't remember which one he was. I think it was the tenth. Or was it the eighth? It could have been the 8th, or not, I think it was, I don't know, ninth or something like that. It was between 8 and 10. Um, and at that point, you can materialize a body. Not for very long, but you can materialize a body for a brief moment. Um, because in order to permanently be here, you have to re and reincarnate, which is what he has done now. Which allows him to be here for a long time, just like us. Um, which it really isn't that long because our lives... Our lives are very short here. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, um, yeah, the first dimension would disappear uh, if everyone left it because there wouldn't be any need for it. Just like um, when Adam and Eve were created, they were created in what we today know as the sixth dimension. It was not called the sixth dimension. It was just when when the creator created Adam and Eve or a man and a man. Uh, oh, that's what I forgot to put that link in that video. Shoot. Okay, I'll do that too. Um, what they were just created in perfection in terms of the soul. The soul was in, a, in what God had deemed to be a perfect state for the soul. So the way Adam and Eve were created, that soul, those souls were perfect. And so it created a dimensional space that matched their soul condition. It was not the sixth dimension. It was just the dimension of creation for Adam and Eve. And that was the, perf the perfected state. Now, when they decided to, when they committed their first sin, which is missing the mark in love, that's all the sin, that's all sin means is you miss the mark of love. Like, you've missed the mark. You did not hit the bullseye. And so God's laws, or God's creation is very specific. It's a very, um, um, all of God's creations, it's, they're very um, precise. That's the word I'm looking for. Very precise. So if you don't hit the target, you've sinned. And so you've missed the mark. And so when they missed the mark, which was rejecting God's gift of his divine love, that was their first sin. And at that moment, the fifth dimension was created. Which was not even the fifth dimension because it wasn't even the sixth dimension if that makes any sense there were no labels for this but they degraded their soul and created a new dimension and as they had offspring as they had their children and because of their sin it transferred to them and they acted out from that that point from from the emotions or the sins within them they created more sinful actions and had more sinful or more unloving things within their soul which created a fourth dimension and still it was not labeled as a fourth dimension <laughs> it, it's not it's, it's like the sixth dimension is is only the sixth dimension because of the first dimension and the first dimension really doesn't have a label but that is the lowest that the soul thus far has been able to create so the love, the unloving, uh, the the lack of love, I should say, within the human soul, is the the lowest that it has. Sorry, the lowest that it has created is what we know today as the first dimension. If it went any lower, then man would have to, or spirits would have to, give it a label, because that's what we do is we give it a label. It would, it would be like. Um, I don't know, you know, the way man is, it's like, oh, it's it's negative one, <laughs> or it's zero, you know, uh, depending on how man wants to do it, but these numbers mean nothing, they're just levels of love, or levels of lack of love, um, but really, there aren't any numbers attached to them, like, God isn't like, this is the sixth dimension, and you're going there, no, it's just, this is the space that has been created based on the lack of love within your soul. Or, this is a space that has been created due to the love within your soul. Does that make sense? 
I hope so. If you have questions, just put it in the comment box, and I'll I'll get to it. Um, so yeah, the really if you really think about it, we can strip all the numbers away. All right, it's not it's like looking at um uh, one of those uh, gradient charts, and there aren't any numbers on it, but you know the bottom is really dark, and as you go higher and higher, the the the, the bars. I'll put I'll put an example so you know what I'm talking about. The, it gets lighter and lighter. It's gray. It's dark gray, and then medium gray, and then light gray. You know, and it gets lighter up until you get to you know where it's real bright and light. Well, that's just the way it is. There aren't any numbers really, but we put numbers on it. We have to put numbers on it in order to understand, uh, just to better understand things. You know, because that's just how we we are. We're intellectual. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, the hell is just it's just a, a dark place. And it's only a dark place because it's matching your soul condition. And that's it. Dark soul, dark place. Very simple. And this stuff is so simple. It's like kindergarten. Kindergartners can learn this stuff. I mean, it's really not that difficult. They can probably understand it a lot better than the, than the adult can. Because the adult has to try to figure out and everything and make, make things the way they aren't and confuse themselves with all kinds of nonsense. But I think children would be able to, to, to understand this some this stuff. <clears throat> Which I think, like, if you have kids, this would be very beneficial to humanity if you did teach them these things. You know, you know, the, the, the you know, because this is the, the thing is, it affects them. They're human souls just like we are, you know. But if we had parents who were not um, aware... You know, and we grow up not being aware. That doesn't mean that our children have to be unaware if you're currently aware. Like, I'm like 40-something years old and I'm aware of this. So if I decided to have kids, my kids would be knowing about this. You better believe it. <laughs> you better believe it. Because that's what a loving parent does is want the best for their child. No matter what, they want the best for their child. So... We do things so that they can have a better life. And that does not mean protect them from their emotions. No. It, it, what that means is showing them how their emotions work. When they feel something, this is what's going on. This is how you fix it. This is how you change. This is how you have a better experience. I haven't seen a guy with a, a stocking on his head in I don't know how long. And I'm looking at one right now. <laughs> uh, anyway, sorry, sidetracked. Um, yeah. Hmm. You know what? Oh, that's what it is. That's what it is. Okay, well, I won't be doing that anymore. All right, so, <clears throat> yeah, the hills. Dun, dun, dun. Teach your children, people. You got nephews and nieces? Teach them. You don't have to go into so, you know... You don't have to put them in fear. And I think that's... A lot of people are afraid of the hells. A lot of people are afraid of dying. And it's like... They're only afraid because they don't understand what's going on. Like, they just don't. They don't get it. Um, and because they've been taught that it is fire and brimstone... They don't want to have anything to do with it. They're like, I'm just going to wait. They do like... They, they, they look at hell like they look at their bills... You know, it's like, oh, well, I, don't, it's, I can't afford it right now. I'm not even going to look at it because it's going to stress me out. And that's the same thing with the health. I don't want to worry about that because I know I've done some stuff and I just, I can't, I just can't. I'm just going to, let's go to the amusement park. <laughs> oh my gosh. Seriously, that's how it works. You know what? I can't even go because yo ass is right just in the middle of the damn road. Anyway, um, I don't, these street sweepers they need a they you know they need a new design that that stuff does not work it makes a mess i don't know if you have street sweepers but here in la uh, it just swishes the trash around it's <laughs> what happens is it um it takes the trash from the the curb and pushes it into the middle of the street i'm like it's just just leave it there i mean really shuffling it around like a deck of cards whatever <laughs> um anyway yeah just you know people that's how people look at things when they're afraid of things but they don't want to deal with it look if you know you've done some things that are gonna put your little butt in the hills 
don't you think you should be working on that stuff <laughs> so you don't go there? I mean, if you're really afraid of it, because most people are afraid of hell, but if you're really afraid of it and you know that you can do something to change it, don't you think it would be in your best interest to do so? I mean, really. You know? Hello, <laughs> people. Get it together now. Get it together. All right. Um, what else? <laughs> oh, my gosh. This morning, man. This morning. This morning. Uh, what else? What else? What else about the hills? Um, oh. I posted a video about... Oh, what is it? Um, it was AJ talking about how spirits move through spheres slash dimensions or something like that. I would encourage you to look that one up because how those spirits move between the dimensions is exactly how you will move in between the hells. So as you increase your, your state in love, um, as you increase your soul and love um sorry I'm thinking about something else too as you increase your soul in love you automatically move up a notch if you will like your environment changes so some for some it gets darker and darker but it's very gradual depending on where you are it's some well not really but depending on the love that you have within your soul depending on the change the variance it will, it will, you'll experience a gradual change or a dramatic change, depending on how much you release, depending on how much love you have within your soul. That will depend, that will dictate, I'm sorry, that will dictate um, the type of transition you have from the dimensions or the levels within the dimensions, if that makes any sense. So, <clears throat> look, lady, you're on your phone, you got me in the intersection, you, you get it together, okay? Get it together. Yeah, let grandma hold the phone. Then she's not behind the steering wheel. Look. <laughs> um <clears throat> so the the if you look at that video, um he's explaining um how these spirits transverse through the dimensions and the levels within the dimensions. Um in addition to that, there are if you listen just to just about every single um, channeling that AJ has done with Mary in terms of these spirits who are in these dark places and they're seeking help. Um, first of all, that that assistance that they're getting from like AJ, you can get from other celestial beings. So you just have to have a desire. Oh, that's a good thing to talk about. Um, all you have to do is have a desire to change but it has to be a pure desire it can't be like it can't be like this let's say you have a whole a whole bunch of bills and you can't pay it and you're like I just want my bills paid and I won't you know I just want them paid and I won't spend any more money but if you don't have a true desire to not spend any more money or spend unwisely to get yourself back in that condition then your your desire is not going to be answered because it's not a pure desire it's just you intellectually saying, I don't want to have pain anymore. But that desire or that want of not having pain anymore is not the same thing as you understanding how you got to that place and you're not going to do it anymore. Does that make sense? It's like a thief. <clears throat> it's, oh, here it goes. It's like a, um, a, a, per, a guy or woman, whomever, it doesn't matter which one it is, um, who has... Um, ooh, Okay, they like Jesus. <laughs> I'm trying to take a picture of it next time. Um, <clears throat> it's like a, a sexual abuser, right? Um, getting caught, and they're in front of the judge, and they're saying, Your Honor, I won't do it anymore. I learned my lesson, but they really haven't. Ah, you see? Versus the, the man who is remorseful and really understands what that what he did and how he affected the the other person and he's um and he's asking for forgiveness he's truly re, re, um truly sorry for what he did that is completely different than the other one. <clears throat> oh, and they don't have a signal oh my goodness 
and they have tape holding on the mirror, lordy be, lordy be. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> There's a lot going on this morning. Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> I was going to say, look, why are you, what are you doing? look, fool, I don't even think you're on the phone. <laughs> what the hell y'all doing? Um, <clears throat> um, what was I saying? Uh, the, oh, so yeah, you have to have a pure desire. That's the only way, because here's the thing, when you have a desire, um, there is, there is an, an, a lot, an energy that can be seen by other spirits. And so when that, that desire for help goes out, when you're truly, truly wanting to change and you want to get out of the situation and you want to just, you just need help and you, and it's from a sincere place, it's from the soul, they can, these celestial spirits can tell. And the way the way the system the way God's system works is he allows these celestial beings to respond to that. And they come and they help you. No different than people, you know, coming to AJ from the spirit world and being channeled and talking to him that way. It's the same thing. So it's not like you don't have you, it's not like you, you know, you're lost in hell forever. No, no, no. You can get out of it. It's so easy. It's easy in terms of having a pure desire for help because if you don't know what to do, this is why you're going to ask for help. You're not just going to ask for help to ask for help. Like if you know how to do it on your own, you're going to do it on your own. It's like a child. Hey, look, if they if they know how to make a sandwich, they'll make a sandwich. But if they're like they if they don't know how, then they're going to ask for help. Hey mom, hey dad, can you help me make a sandwich? I don't know how to do it. I, I saw you do it, but I'm really not sure. You know, I'm not comfortable with the knife, the butter knife. You know, it's like these things. This is why a child would ask for help because they don't fully understand. <clears throat> and so, if you're in a place and you're an adult and you have all these emotional injuries and you don't know what the hell to do, then you're a child needing help. You don't understand. And so, you need clarity, you need assistance. And these spirits, these celestial spirits, are more than happy to help you. More than happy. Hold on. Okay. Um, yeah, they're more than happy to help you. Um, <clears throat> so, being in the hells, yeah, there's, you know, I know there's a lot of religious belief. And you can believe that. You can believe that until the day you die. Or I should say the day you transition and leave this place. Um, however, it's good to have this information because once you realize that what you have been taught isn't, isn't real, doesn't work, well... Well, I should say it doesn't work because they haven't taught you about anything. Religions haven't taught you about anything in terms of the spirit life. They just said you're going to hell or you're going to heaven. That's all they say. They don't have any any other information for you, which it should be an indication that you need to start listening to other people who have some information in terms of, you know, the experiences. Oh, that's what I wanted to say. So, you know, <clears throat> we're very privileged at this point to have YouTube and video and documentation video documentation of these spirits talking about their experiences in the hells like that is so important i mean you can you can go to a pastor you can go to a church and reverend so-and-so is going to say yeah you know you'd fire and brimstone if you don't act right and do what you need to do if you don't follow god's word and and live the way of jesus then you're gonna go to hell <laughs> i mean you can do that but you're not getting much information. You're just being told where you're going to go. But that person clearly doesn't have any information in terms of what happens in the spirit world. Just as they don't have information in terms of um, what's going on in heaven as they claim. So when they say you're going to heaven, well, what's going to happen when you go to heaven? Where are you going to be with God? Okay, well, what happens at that point? Well, I don't know. Because they don't know. They're just telling you these stories and they don't have anything to back it up. But you have documentation. You have spirits who are willing to communicate and say, hey, you know what? I need help. This is the way it was in the hells. It was very cold or it's cold and dark now and I need help. I need to get out of this place. I don't know how to get out. Um, so if you want to listen to something like that, um, the the one that I posted about the Shot Farmer, that, that one, I think it's called Shot Farmer. Jesus, these people. What the, these freaking 20 miles an hour. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> um... I'll, you know, I'll just put the link at the bottom of this video. That way you don't have to search for it. Um, hopefully I remember because I have a tendency to forget. Um, 
So yeah, anyway, that's the hills, people. Don't be afraid of it. Just don't want to be there and do things so you don't have to go there. <laughs> but like I said before, I do want to see what it what it's all about. Not live there, but I do want to be able to go down there and see what it's all about. Uh, anyway, all right, everyone. Have a great weekend. I'll talk to you later. Bye now. What the hell's going on with this truck? Oops, bye.